What an absolute journey I've been on in the past couple of days. Um, I have made it my absolute mission to watch almost every Studio Ghibli film. I haven't done it yet, hence why this video title is almost every Studio Ghibli film. However, I've watched a lot of them, and I've watched them back to back. So um, I'm currently just seeing the world through Ghibli. Like, I look at trees and I see Ghibli. I look at fields and I see, Ghibli. I see rain and I think Ghibli. Um, and I am in love. Before this, I had not watched anything to do with this sort of genre apart from Pokemon, which is shameful, I know. However, I have fixed my sins. Um, and I'm finding it fascinating. What started as just a... My friends are saying how much they love these films and they've been having a go at me for not watching them. Um, so I thought I'd give them a go because I want to be part of these conversations and like my friends can demonstrate how much they love these films by the way that they talk about them. Um, however, because I'm me, I soon found it my mission to figure out what makes these films tick and why they're so good. And I've come up with a few reasons for why I personally love them. So that's what I'm going to talk about today in hopes that either my viewership would find it interesting and fascinating like me or in hopes that a budding filmmaker or writer comes across this video in their research and uh, like it helps them learn how to make a better film, I guess. Um, so without further ado, uh, from Spirited Away to Porco Rosso, from uh, Totoro to Pompoco, let's talk about Studio Ghibli and why it's absolutely fantastic. So, a little bit of a warning, this isn't going to be my most in-depth review or my most in-depth video essay, you could say, simply because I'm not an expert on this topic. I've only watched nine or ten of these films, um, and I don't want to claim to be an expert. Um, my expertise is very much in live action and sci-fi and things like that. However, I still want to make a video about this because I really enjoyed them. So. Let me talk, start talking about Studio Ghibli uh, by mentioning their themes. Their themes are super fascinating and are really where I found the mastery of these films. First of all, just the themes that they've picked, the themes that they use in these films are great. They're like cherry picked and hand picked, they're precise. Um, they're not sort of like these, some of them are quite big ideas but they're very controlled um, and they hit home really hard. Um, and the stories that they tie these themes to are also very excellent and effective. Like, we're using this way of animation to teach people, perhaps younger people, these really important messages. However, that's not the only good thing they do with their themes, because they are great themes. However, the placement of those themes is where the good writing comes in. Um, allow me to explain what I mean by using an example. In Kiki's Delivery Service, a film about a witch who moves to a new city and soon finds that she can set up her own business delivering things because she can fly. She loves this job, um, but she soon gets burnt out and she hates that she's like, she just finds that she can't do the same job. She finds that she's been too stressed and doing the same thing over and over and over again. We don't find this theme of burnout until about the last 25 minutes of the film because like burnout you don't see it coming for the first like hour and a half of this film we're just like this is a cool adventure sort of film i love this this is super cute and then bang we're hit with the burnout theme and we're now sad and crying and i love that because you don't see burnout coming this theme and message is placed in such an amazing place that it tells a whole story by itself it it impacts the audience it's so effective because you're like damn i'm in the same seat like i'm i'm feeling the same feelings that the character is feeling so by placing their theme in a specific place they're making the whole film so much better and and i've got a, another example for this in pompoco a film about how the humans are killing nature you know global warming this whole like crap show that the world is in right now um the raccoons in that film who can talk and like shapeshift are trying to stop the humans from destroying their forest now global warming and like humans being bad have basically this has basically been an idea 
and a fact since the start of time. We've always known this and we should accept this. So this message, this theme of the film is like bashed into your head like in the first two minutes of this film because it's already a known thing unlike Burnout in Kiki's Delivery Service where it's a hidden and secret thing. In Pompoko, the message, the theme is placed straight at the start and it's sort of like a jarring experience because it forces you to look at yourself for the next two hours. Again, it's super effective and almost makes you emotional. I've always had this issue because in my own writing, I never know when to place my theme. Do I place it at the start? You know, do I place it at the end? What's like the most poetic idea? And then you have the crisis of how hard do I want to hit the audience with this message? Um, and I've always found that a hard thing to do. However, if I ever get to write something in the future, I'm going to remember these films and I'm going to remember that not to overthink it, but to think like, what's the message and when do we find this out in our lives? Like, I don't know why I didn't think of that before, but that is some genius writing. And why should we stop talking about the writing in these films? Because it's absolutely excellent. Um, especially in the world building department of these films. Like, first of all, the concepts of these films. A witch that delivers stuff because they can fly is awesome. Like, and also Nausicaa is like Dune, but even better. And uh, we've got like, like a, a bounty hunter pig in Porco Rosso. Like, that's so cool. So full stop, the writing is absolutely excellent when they come up with ideas. However, the world building itself in these films is so good. And it's not even like the settings, it's one idea and that idea is acceptance. All of the characters are absolutely fine with the idea that things exist in their world. Let's say in Kiki's delivery service, which is I know, one I'm going to keep calling back to just because I love it so much. Um, they accept that witches exist. In fact, they're excited that witches exist. They're not like starting a mass manhunt to go kill witches because they're scared of them. No, they just accept that they're around. In Howl's Moving Castle, they just accept that there's a castle that is on legs and can move. Um, then in like My Neighbor Totoro, which is even more ex interesting because they love this idea that they live in a haunted house. Like, all of these ideas are so interesting and cool. Like, they accept that there's a pig bounty hunter in Porco Rosso. They don't even question it. It's so good. Um, and the reason I love it so much, because one, acceptance is just great. Like, that's just something we need to do more in our films. But secondly, it clears out a whole load of just conflict that we've seen so much before. Instead of having the conflict of the film being like, they're different, we need to kill them. Um, instead, it's about something else. It's about a different story. It's about a more personal story instead of making all of the characters feel like outcasts, which I'm just a bit bored of nowadays. And it also actually kind of reminds me of uh, a film that got released on Disney Plus a couple of weeks ago called Crush, where most of the characters in that are queer leaning characters. Um, however, they're just already out like there's like no conflict in that they're just accepted as who they are Which when I watched it was like a wait a minute that they didn't even like touch on coming out as a, a Conflict in that film. That's so cool Now that I think about it I might have to make a video on it because it's such a good film and lastly like my final point Let's talk about the visuals because I feel like I've learned again so much about visual storytelling in these films and especially the idea of allowing scenes to breathe, allowing moments just time, instead of having everything fast paced cuts, instead of being worried that the audience is getting bored, just letting scenes play out is such a fun and interesting thing. In Studio Ghibli films, they do this thing where a character will walk off screen, but it won't cut away for an extra couple of seconds. They'll allow the audience to take in what's just happened. Um, and then they'll cut and they'll forward the plot. And I feel like this is a great thing that they do, is that they understand that a lot of people are going to get bored by their films. However, their audience that they're going for, their target audience, are going to absolutely love it. And that's who they're making it for. Another great example is in Porco Rosso, when we're seeing what is typically a normal flying shot of a plane going from one place to another. 
However, the way they shoot it is so interesting. I guess how they draw it is so interesting. But they have just the plane flying across a wide, like an extreme wide shot over here. And we just see the entire thing play out. We just see it move from one end to the other. And it's it, it's weirdly emotional. Like it's got this lovely French classical music playing underneath. And it's just weirdly good like you take you you're able to take a breath our senses aren't overloaded and especially for something like flying a plane um which would normally be like a quite fast-paced shot uh, action scene no it's a it's a beautiful thing like studio ghibli find the beauty in their films they find the beauty of rain and fields and like they make a bus stop in my neighbor totoro look so emotional it's it's just good and I, I really wish i had better words to explain it like that's that what, what more could i say studio ghibli films are art and they're so good damn i, I really wish i scripted this better <laughs> what can you expect though to be fair, i do call these videos ramblings because i don't, hardly have a script um and i don't like following it i'm really sorry that my last point there didn't uh, make any sense <laughs> But uh, there's a few things about what I love about Studio Ghibli films. They have taught me so much about filmmaking and storytelling and just the craft that goes into these films. Um, if you're interested, here is my rankings of all of the Studio Ghibli films that I've watched so far. Um, yeah, probably have a go at me in the comments for that because Porco Rosso is way high. Probably higher than it should be. Um, however, thank you so much for watching this video. This really was ramblings i'm recording this at like 10 o'clock in the morning which is probably why um but yeah thank you so much for watching thank you so much for loads of like love on my recent videos that's always lovely to see thank you so much and uh can you do me just one more thing can you have a great day thank you